many things are planned uh, for the Blue Monk Jazz Gallery. We intend to make it be a platform for Jamaican jazz, poets, the kind of entertainment that is currently not being provided elsewhere in Kingston. And if we presume that Kingston is truly one of the most sophisticated capitals in this part of the world, then I think we need a jazz gallery. Our guest tonight is Monte Alexander. Thank you. 
I'd like to introduce our bass player. Say hello to Paul Burner. Paul Burner. This boy here is Duffy Jackson on the drums. And we call him our hand drummer. That's Robert Thomas Jr., this guy. Here's one of those songs from Brazil, Samba de Orfeo, Samba de Orfeo.
such an intangible word, jazz, because it can mean almost anything. Uh, styles of jazz playing uh, vary from Louis Armstrong, who most of the world love and enjoyed, even the non-jazz loving public, right down to the great, the modernists of today. And for me, a series of events took place that made me, that just drew me like a magnet closer and closer to it. Um, as a youngster in Jamaica right here, they used to present a lot of foreign artists. And among them, I saw um, Nat King Cole, who was a great popular performer, singer, you know, but he was truly a great musician as well in the jazz world. Louis Armstrong was another one. And I think I evolved into this approach, this expression, this source of expression, rather than I said, I'm going to be a jazz musician because I really didn't know what the word, to this day I can't even tell you what it means because it's such an intangible word. Um, also, because I, in my youth, when I was studying the piano, they were so rigid about the whole thing, and so strict, that um, because I guess I had a little rebellious nature as a youngster, as most youngsters do, I couldn't really go along with the, um, that aspect of it. Even though I knew it was a fine thing and I wanted to be able to do it, something about the discipline aspect didn't, didn't groove me, as they say. So I ended up uh, being a rebellious guy, which was to go and listen to the Boogie Woogie guys playing the piano and uh, go and hang out with um, Byron Lee's band that out by Cable Hut or whatever, you know, and doing everything that I wasn't supposed to do as far as those uh, discipline areas were concerned. And um, there was that little bit of the, um, the uh, what you call it, the rebel in that form of music. And I went after it and I got to enjoy it more and more. And I got the ability to grasp it better from a very simple form to more complex aspects of the music and I'm still doing that I guess I'm still evolving somewhat as a musician but um, that's uh, basically the way I look at it it's just a question of evolving from situation to situation and you're growing every day the day you stop growing is the day you might as well quit I'd like to play a song that I wrote it's called Sweet Lady
Kalyani, the street I lived, Tucker Avenue. Um, I live right down from Sir Alexander Bustamante. And I used to hear the cat up over there. It turned out to be um, Robert Lightborn. He had these wonderful fingers and he used to play these songs and I, I was captured by it and I remember going to the gate trying to hear it. And uh, Lady Buster Matt invited me in once and I remember seeing this man play the piano and they were very nice to me. And it was uh, inspirational and I went from there to other things. But uh, that was the street where I guess I got exposed to the piano on a personal level. We had a piano at home, and uh, I used to sit there and spend a lot of time making, copying the tunes off the radio. And um, whenever any friends of my family would come by, I had to entertain them, which I didn't like too much. But um, Tucker Avenue was a great street.
here now. I remember doing the uh, Unpardonable Sin, which is teeth out of school. <laughs> it's a teeth out. I shouldn't tell it, I shouldn't say that, I guess. And I would go down to Federal Studio at the time that they started to record uh, a lot of music. Local um, this, uh, sound system guys like Coxon and Duke Reed would rent the studio down there. And myself and some of these other musicians, including Don Drummond, Ernest Wrangling. Johnny Moore and uh, some other people and I was playing piano on, on these sessions and all these fellas coming in with their tunes that they wrote and I remember how this music had its unique feel because it was us these musicians in the studio making an effort to try to bring to these various singers the sound they wanted but yet it would come out with our local approach to it so a guy might come in and say this, you know, this tune I have I write this tune I want a bolero beat so in our limited way, we start to play the bolero beat, but it had that little bit of New Orleans rhythm and blues groove to it, as well as the calypso thing. And that's how this thing emerged, as well as the sound that the recording studio would provide, which may have been uh, a plus or a minus, as far as good recording tech sound is concerned, which I believe is what made the sound of Jamaica to what it is later. <laughs> You're just too marvelous, too marvelous words. Like glorious, glamorous, and that old standby amorous. You're just too wonderful, I never find the words to tell enough. Spell enough, I mean, they just aren't swell enough. You're just too much, and oh, so very, very, to ever be in Webster's Dictionary. And so, I'm borrowing this love song from the birds. To tell you that you're marvelous, too marvelous for words to do. Do Wonderful, I'll never find the words that tell enough. Fell enough, I mean, they just aren't swelling up. You're just too much, and also very, very to ever be in any dictionary. And so I'm borrowing this love song from the birds to tell you that you're marvelous. Too marvelous for boop. Whatever I've retained from Jamaica has been more something about the attitude than a specific approach to playing music, a style, or any of that. It's an attitude. Because I will just say that as a young, I know it's changed a lot in Jamaica, which is quite understandable, but as a youngster in Jamaica, the music I heard coming out of Jamaica, which is what mag was a magnet for me in many ways, was something that really celebrated a great joyful attitude. Now certainly was more to be happy about back then, I would say. 
you know, the blood life in the world in general. But there was something about the old time Calypso music where a man could uh, really sit back and enjoy himself with what he was doing, which I think um, they still try to hold on to down here. And that more than anything else is something that I, I try to bring out in the music. Not so much like uh, this is a type of a rhythm or this is a type of a beat or this is a latest tune by this reggae guy or any of that kind of business. It's an attitude towards the music. You know, I just, I try to bring the trade winds into the plane, the Caribbean, the beautiful environment that we have here, which is something that um, the guy growing up in New York City is not going to have. He'll have a certain urgency to what he's doing, but um, I, feel, I feel I'm a little different to a lot of the guys here because I approach it from, from that, and I try to maintain the roots that, I've, that I nurtured when I was young, as well as um, the music form that came out of this country is so valid in the world of music today that I cannot ignore it.
think um, my style is a evolving kind of piano style where I do reflect a lot of the piano work of the masters throughout the ages, including the stride people, the boogie woogie piano players, um, the more recent modernists, the um, so-called cocktail type pianists, the Nat King Coles, people such as that. And um, I try to incorporate all the sounds that I hear in life into the piano. I just don't think of the piano. I think of music in general. If I hear, if I hear a sound like a bird, I'll try to play a bird on the piano. Or, or a car horn, or whatever it is. The piano is just an instrument in which to, in, to, to um, express myself. And I don't think at all about the style I have, whereas before people would always be saying, you sound like this, you sound like that, and I used to be wondering about what my style was like. But I don't think about it anymore, and all I know is as the time goes by, folks seem to identify my playing instantly. When I hear something on the radio that says Monty playing, which is kind of nice to know, but I don't concern myself too much with that. I just play what I feel, and if I listen to myself over the years, I see a certain ev evolution taking place. But um, the basic thing that I started out is still there. I just want to create a happy feeling within what I do and use the piano as a medium of expression. had no way, I would like to continue doing what I do, which is to travel around playing music and changing the scenery and the environment every so often, so I never get that restless feeling which comes along 
for me a lot as Please most join other me in musicians on of my drums, Robert area. Thomas. That's Robert Thomas. But to do it somewhat less under more ideal circumstances, to always have ideal that madman on the drums, situations, that's Jackson. Um, pianos always that I, I can play on well. Um, circumstances, Paul best Burner. travel, Paul best Thank you very accommodations, much. all these little things that make life a little easier so that when you go play, it's, it's easier. Maybe not 365 it's days a year, but half as many. And then to learn in to orchestrate and write for um, Thank you movies. very much. It's been a pleasure to play for you. Uh, yes, that's yes. It's all it Things like that. But back tomorrow, right now, Saturday, I can't even Sunday, think too much because I like you, what you. I'm doing so much love, that love, if love. everything continues, I wouldn't, I wouldn't find any fault with it. I just take it and keep going along in the same more or less group, you know? Basically, um, I am happy about the way things are going. I enjoy what I do. I travel around a lot. Um, this year I was in Australia, Japan, Europe. I'm going to Belgium on this weekend. Next week I'll be in Texas. So I'm a real, what you call, traveling minstrel. And um, that in itself is a great challenge. And if I can keep doing that, but under more appropriate circumstances, I will. I keep doing it. So, life is great. Thank you.